Welcome to my Best Eleven podcast. Today we are joined by a midfield winger maestro who I have seen put at least two dozen defenders on their backsides from all the lollipops you used to love to do. We are joined today by, I'm going to name a couple of these clubs, Defence Force, Wrexham, Luton, Sunderland, Ipswich, Millwall um, and Trinidad and Tobago player Carlos Edwards. How are you, Carlos? I'm good, thank you, Andrew. I'm actually great. Excellent. Lovely to have you here. Marl, how do you know Carlos? I mean, it goes back, obviously, most people are going to be Luton, because I mean, I'm the only one who's been at the one club, ain't I? So that's where it is, Luton, but it's probably the most stressful guy I've ever seen in a Luton shirt. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm exaggerating. <laughs> this guy, this guy, right, is so laid back, right? Uh, it was <laughs> frightening. I thought I was calm. I thought I was cool. I thought I was collected until Carlos Edwards walks into our club. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> did, they have, was he, did he come in horizontal? Or was he so laid back? He didn't even walk through the door to speak to Mike Muir. Was he actually lying down when he spoke to Mike Muir the whole time? He, he, I he come it, in. I think, I think he was wearing pajamas. I think he just come out. He, he just he just jumped out of his car with his, with his slippers on and pajamas, and he was just relaxed. Yeah. What's happening? That's him. That was it. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, t- I just come in with the smooth, the smooth way, is it? I, I think I came in in a casket, just lying down. Like, they just walked me in. Like, there you go. <laughs> you made other people carry you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So we are um, going to go through today Carlos's best 11 players he's ever played with, um, as well as the best manager he's ever worked under. Uh, what we like to do is we go through those people who haven't listened before. We go through the players. Um, Marv and myself have a few guesses because Carlos gives us some clues. Um, and then as we make our way through, we'll find out and just dig a little bit deeper in terms of with Carlos, his career, um, what makes him tick and what he's doing now. We're going to jump straight into the deep end. Um, obviously, you are, well, I just quite told by Marv, you're currently doing a little bit of um, coaching and assistant managing. So what formation have you gone for for this team and why? Um, I'm going for a 4-3-3 diamond shape. Hey. Would you have fitted, would you have suited this? Uh, it all depends what position they would yeah. have me play. Okay. Yeah. Your favorite, where did you? Where was your favorite position? I would say um, right wing back. Wing back. Okay. So you like playing a forward. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? What the modern day now? How they do it? Obviously, some still play with the four. Some still play with the three at the back. With you know, with that full backs going back and forth. Um, I did in my career play, obviously, that three at the back where I think I was Speedy Gonzalez at the time going meet, meet, you know, up and down the flank and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That's when I had a, you know, a bit of legs left in me. But obviously, with the modern day now, it all depends on the shape of the midfield, how you have the midfield. If you have a, a flat three in the middle, if you're playing that four, four, three, and you, you just want your wingers to, you know, and you have that. Number four, who is just holding for the fullbacks to to bomb forward. So, I think one of the reasons why I, I enjoy playing that fullback is because you can see a bit more going forward. You 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 actually going onto the play more. So you could time your runs. You can know when to go forward. You can know when to hold and and, and things like that. So I would say a right wing back would be mm, one excellent. of the positions so- that I really really enjoyed. For the kids these days, we're talking a kind of Trent Alexander Arnold, that type of player. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Excellent, excellent. So, um, you go for four three three. What we're going to do is go straight. We're just going to jump straight in. Make sure you give us some clues on the way through. Um, sure. Regarding goalkeeper, because um, obviously you played for a number of clubs. And yep. over to you, sir. You can, and you well, can, if you wish to. Sorry, yep. you can give some yep. honourable mentions. So yeah, if there's something yes. you've missed out, just in case they listen, we've had a few comments on our social media of ex-players who didn't make it, who got a bit annoyed. So if you need to, feel free. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm going for this goal. I'm going for my goalkeeper. Obviously, Marv will know him. 
I might know a lot of people anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely talk a lot of rubbish. Great goalkeeper. His presence is absolutely remarkable. Um, and talks non-stop. Non-stop? Was he an international? No. Wasn't an international. Um, good friends with Coiny, good friends with Nichols, good friends with Big Stevie. Absolutely not a goal, but a great goalkeeper. Was he signed from Burnley? Yeah. Hmm. And he played for Luton. Played for Luton. Oh, was he Marlon Beresford? Marlon Beresford. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. He does, talk, he does talk the nonsense and talks a lot, doesn't he? Unbelievable. Unbelievable in goal, but honestly, you, some, some of the things that comes out of his mouth, you think you don't even need toilet tissue for that rubbish sometimes. You know, you need something else. You know, but, um, what do you like to see in a goalkeeper? And what did, did Marlon have that? I mean, as a coach that. now, what do, you, what do you want to see? What's your most important? But, Is it shot stopping? In the air, the non-stop talk. What you want? I mean, every everything as as you would like, because you you want that commanding presence. When you know, sometimes obviously he's the he's the first in the attack, last in defence. So you want that presence. You want that surety when when it comes to aerial balls, when it comes to talking to people in front of him, and just commanding and just obviously giving the assurance situation and and, and other situations because. If, if you have a goalkeeper who's not, who's really quiet and really not talking to your defense or talking to the people in front of you and giving instructions, it kind of a bit boring. So I rather someone who's literally talking nonstop than I had someone who's not. Yes, it might get a bit annoying, but for a player, it's a bit of assurance that to say, Hey, he's, he's alert. He's ready. So I got to be on my game. So I got to be ready for whatever comes. And to be fair, he, ne- he never disappoints. Because, you know, I had a great year and a half with him playing at Luton. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. So you play with um, more, what you'd say, household name goalkeepers as well. And I'm talking in there specifically um, off the top of my head, people like Craig Gordon, Richard Wright, I think, as well. Um, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. What do you think it was about Marlon that, that's kind of, that, that meant he didn't ever quite get to that echelon, that, that kind of level? I think at the time, I think Marlon was kind of coming down and his, yeah. obviously, it is, his, his time was coming down. So, you know, but maybe if it wasn't four or five years before, around the time that I was at Luton, 2005, six, you, you look back maybe early 2000, if he was there then, honestly, and he was a bit younger, I think he could have gone on to be, bigger and better he could have gone on to maybe play at the highest level because he yeah. just had that that presence and that aura about him where you know you you, you want something in the goalkeeper you know um you're looking at goalkeepers now who's going for all million 30 million and 40 50 million and stuff like you know i think in that era he would have worked that kind of money if he was a bit younger because he just had that as I said before, that X factor about him because he was a great goalkeeper, shot stopper. You know, he, he could have kicked the ball. He could have, you know, used to command things in the air when he's coming. And one thing he, I would tell you, he never took, he would, he would, even though you are his player, teammate, he will take you out because he, <laughs> he, he, he was making sure that that ball and his, he would pick you up afterwards and call the physio over. But he's making sure that that ball doesn't go into his goal. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So goalkeepers, let's move to defence. Right back. And has, right he named, back. has he named himself, Marv? Let's have a look. Ooh, um, I would not name myself. No one has, no one there, has. There, no. Yeah, there, there is a, another guy who I love playing with. You know, at one stage we used to go kind of neck and neck. And um it just so happened that, you know, obviously things didn't work out. 
obviously a few injuries kind of stumble his his progress a bit. He is an international player. Did he play? Did he play for a Midlands club? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He, and and did Mark he play, knows he, exactly. Did, Mark, no, no, no. Did he play for Luton he, as well? He played for Luton as well. You might have known exactly who it was I was talking about, but he's just playing games at the moment with me. Andrew, so. no, I'm, getting, I'm not sure if Andrew knows. No, that's played at, your Midlands club is Wolves. Yeah. Are you asking or are you telling me? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm telling you. I'm confident. I'm telling no, you. You're, I'm you're, telling yes. you. Yeah, that's who I'm thinking of, Andrew. Kevin on, Foley. Andrew. Yeah. Kevin Foley it is. Kevin Foley. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kevin Foley. Ah. Excellent. Yeah, he was and really young coming through. I mean, you, not that I'm saying you are old, but you were kind of, what, three, four years ahead of him? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. In terms of age-wise yeah. in the dressing room. Yeah. And Kev had this, you, you could have seen it. He had this thing about him that he... He could have just gone from a next level to the next to the next without even breaking a sweat because he was that committed and he was that focused that I think he was a bit he was a bit crazy also. I think it's an Irish thing, you know, when yeah. you know, I mean. <laughs> you know, but at the same time, he is a great player, it was a great player to play with. Um and it just so happened we had that great connection on the right side together, you yeah. know. And then, and then obviously there was a time we used to swap roles a bit, you know, cause he used to like to go forward. So I used to give him that time and I had that, I had, I could have do a bit of defensive duties also. So it, we used to really, really complement each other going forward and defending because, you know, we, we knew we had the capability of going forward and creating stuff and we had the capability of defending. So we used to, you know, really, really, Complement each other going that way. Yeah, no, definitely. And you, um, you must have played against him in the Premier League again then, when you were at Sunderland and he was at Wolves. Yeah, yeah, did you yeah. Did or not? No, um, no, it was. A... No, I didn't. To be fair, because the year that we got promoted with Sunderland to the Prem, Wolves were in the Championship. They right. got relegated that. that... Yeah, so, so you kind of swapped, I didn't get, you swapped over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swapped over a bit. So I didn't get the, the chance to to play against him and, and, and stuff like so. But I did I did had a little loan spell with him from Sunderland because I was injured and I went for a two month loan at well. So I did had you know I went back there with him again. Yeah. And I think that year they got promoted that year. Um obviously under Mick. When they came back up to the Premier League, I think it was in 2008, I think it was. Too bad, like, yeah. I mean, was it nice yeah. to see him? Obviously, you saw him when he was really young. Was it nice to see the progress in you know, kind of it was, um, four or five it, years later? Yeah, because, because I knew he had that capability of going to the next level, which he, he didn't surprise me. He did. Obviously, seeing him in the in the prem was just like wow, yeah, that's that's where he, you know, he's supposed to be because he he he's worked his way up from you know got promoted. Obviously, blow league one open with Luton with record um, points for the season. You know, the first year in the championship, we absolutely no one expected us to finish in the top half of the table. Obviously, and we were doing so well in the second year. Obviously. Surprisingly, obviously, the team got ripped apart by, you know, selling this player here and there, and, and things just kind of, you know, obviously folded. But to see him where he was was a, you know, breath of fresh air, really. And it just so happened, obviously, you know, I, I think injuries kind of dent his progression to go to the, that next level where he really should have been. Definitely, definitely. So. Let's just say, yeah, sorry, um, all right, no, so <clears throat> going back to, um, well, let's say where it began. I mean, I know you was playing a club before Wrexham, but why, but how come Wrexham? Why Wrexham, Carlos? What was, how that come about? You know, um, my agent at the time, Mike Berry, um, Obviously, I, I I don't know if you recall Big Clayton Ince, goalkeeper for Trinidad yes, and Tobago. Yes, yes, right. yeah, he was at Crew. Yes, 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 he was at Crew. You bang on there, Marv. So 
Clayton had trials and stuff in England before I joined the the, the Defence Force team. And obviously Dario really obviously was interested in Clayton. Um signed Clayton. And Mike was the agent who negotiated all the terms and you know and Mike obviously asks Clayton, obviously, if there was any guys in Trinidad who he think could have, you know, cut it to the English level. And obviously stupidly enough, um Clayton mentioned my name. <laughs> I don't know why, Marv, don't ask. I don't know why. So he said, okay, you'll make a trip to Trinidad. So he made a trip. And Marvin, I, I would tell you, and Andrew, he came to see me play. And you know when your mom is twitching like that, you're thinking, oh, God, people are looking. I had the worst game ever. <laughs> no <laughs> way. The, the, the only thing I did with that game was put one in the top bin. And listen, he said, listen, would you like, I looked at him and thinking, mate, you, you, you're not offering me a trial at Wrexham, are you, after what you just saw? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yeah. So I went on a three week trial. I, I came out of, in, of Trinidad and I, I rem- always remember in 1998 on the 28th of December, Marvin, <laughs> I came out of that airport, you in Wrexham. It's wet, it's cold, it's free. It's penguins and polar bears up there. <laughs> and you're thinking, what am I getting myself into here? And I, I remember playing my first game against Shrewsbury. And this defender, I, I went up ahead and this defender took me out on a Tuesday night game. And I came down and I got up and I went mud in my face. And he went, well, welcome to England. <laughs> 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 and I was like, and you know what? After that, obviously, it took a while. They were impressed with what they saw. Um, obviously, Brian Flynn, who was the manager at the time, really liked like me, and took a while to get the work permit. It took me like six months, and in the year of two thousand, I actually signed for Wrexham. So, and here I am still after twenty-two years. Fantastic. That's great. I mean, Defence Force, are they a big team in? Wait, well, they, they are, they are actually the military team. I wasn't sure yeah. if I just assumed that and, and do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, they, they, they are, they are the military team. Because so have you got a military said, background then? Yes, I do. Hmm. Spent do you? before. Yeah, I do. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Look at me. This is <laughs> I, I love doing this. Listen, you've got yeah, a lot of people don't. What was he? Was he? Was you uh, the um, events manager of the military, or what? Were you taking what what events? Are you trying to take? Are you taking a mic now? Or what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was the events manager. Uh, manager when it comes to the guns. <laughs> now, to be fair, I went through the whole from co- when I finished college and training. I went through the, went through the whole military training, everything. Um, my college coach, who's passed, um, rest in peace, um, Mr. Gozner. Um, he, he, listen, he was like my second dad. He came to my house at four o'clock one morning and he said, you are going into the military. He told me pack a bag and he took me straight down to the base. And that's the first day that everyone was going into start military training. Now I had a big hair on my head. I had a little gold key and you're looking at all the recruits. You know what it's like? Full metal jacket style. You got your skin head. You're looking like a convict. No beard, no nothing and i'm thinking i'm looking at all the recruits and i'm thinking hey I'll, I'll, i'm on shaving like i got beard a little mush you know thinking it didn't it didn't last for long because first thing i was by the barbers going what you want a, a, a one two what that nah, one <laughs> you know i was scalped and spent three six months of military training and spent three years after that in the military service oh yeah, you- I made my in- yeah I made my international debut uh, for Trinidad playing for the Defence Force. So oh. is it conscription over there? Did you, um- no, no, no. It was it. You know, it's it's good, but then it's well, I, I would say it's good. I won't say it's bad. It's good because at that point in time, you know, you're young. I was only eighteen. And you're thinking, my life just started. I, j- I just want to just enjoy my life. Like, college is yeah. finished. And I just want to 
you know, do what I have to do to just, you know, enjoy my life. And then my football coach was like, the brigadier who was obviously the head man at the time, I went to college with his son. His son was about a year, his son was a goalkeeper, you know, fair, um, weird enough. And he, he always wanted me to come into the military also, but I used to say, hell no, like the military, like, nah, that's not for me. I, I'm, t I'm not disciplined enough to be in no military. <laughs> and you know what? I wouldn't regret it one bit. The decision yeah. that I made to go in there, even though I was pushed in, but as soon as I started, Day by day, I start enjoying it. Start, you know, start learning things. You will, it's, and I think that made me to the individual going forward to playing football because if it wasn't for that hard back, um, exterior of military training, I don't think I would have made it coming up to England in the freezing cold. I would have been ready to pack in and just say, it's too cold. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that kind of played a part, like, because I always had that mentality in, in military training, like, it's going to finish. It must finish. It must end. Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you know, so I had that drilled into my head all the time. Like the day is going to end. The day is going to end. Yes. It's, training is going to finish. And then before you know it, you'll be like smooth sailing and it happened. You know, it's incredible. That's, yeah. Yeah. There you go, Marv. Something new oh, every day. Nice. I <laughs> see. Never knew that. See, this is why I love doing these little. Uh, yeah, shows. exactly. Not, not, not a lot of people know that. Not a lot of people know. Oh, everyone just as Marv said, everyone sees the pretty face boy. Like, yeah, <laughs> footballer. Yeah, that's it. They, 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 don't, they didn't know I was down in the grime and the mud and the bushes and all that. Yeah. You know, doing see? what God knows what. So what do we call you then? Do we call you Sergeant Carlos? Or? Uh, I, to be fair, I, I, I didn't spend enough years to go up the ranks. So I um, was just a private. I finished as a private. Private That's Edwards. That's still good though. That's still good. A private, listen, private yeah. Edwards. I love the ring on that private Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to change your name now on his phone. Ah, uh, no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> I, I just saw my, I, to be fair, just when I was in training with the women's team, I saw one of my friends who I was in military training with, you know, he's just, he's just senior me by numbers because you go by alphabetic order. So he, he's just senior me by, um, by one number or something like that. And he's actually a sergeant now. And he's, that was in 98. So he's have like over 20 years service, you know, and I saw him and I was like, wow. I said, just imagine I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at him and thinking that could be me. Like I could have been a sergeant or, you know, going on, you know, things like that. So awesome. If you'd have, tur if you'd have turned around on the 28th of December. I know, I know. That would have been you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So we're going to keep going with our team. Um, yeah. And hopefully we'll find out some more amazing facts. So left back in your team, Carlos. Left back would be uh, this guy. Played with him at two clubs. Two of my clubs. Um, two of my clubs. And um, he's had spells at uh, Forest. He's had spells at Rotherham. Um, um, he's a six-two guy. He could play the centre back also. Ooh, you know, there's so, one the two clubs. One of the two clubs. Sunderland and Ipswich. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can't think of his name. I can't. That's the only thing I can't think of his name. Oh. Andrew, help. Um, would you like to give me, would you like me to give you his initials? No, 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 no. No, where did he start his career? <laughs> did he start off at Shrewsbury, I think it was. Oh, that's what um, I was thinking of then, because I thought it started. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. Did Phil Bardsley play for Phil Bardsley? Yeah, was it him? No, no, because he started his career no. at United, I think. That's yeah, what I was thinking. Yeah, that's that's, yeah, that's yeah, who yeah. I was thinking Phil, of. No, nah, Phil, uh, Phil, yeah, Phil started at United. So it's and Sunderland and Ipswich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did Kieran he Richardson could play? play? Kieran played in the midfield. He had, he had, he had. Oh, he um, played still at the left back in the United. 
Well, kind of, kind of, but to be fair, Kieran played everywhere. Yeah, true. I didn't think I, I didn't think he knew exactly what, what was his best position, Kieran. You know, so well, then, give, us, give us an initial. Give us an initial then. Uh, the, the initials is D C. His initials. It's left back. Yeah. And it was at Ipswich and Sunderland. Yeah. He came to Ipswich for a bit, like, um, on loan. Yeah. The problem is, oh, is uh, Ipswich won the Premier League, so. Ipswich and Sunderland. Left back. David, no, no, nah, no. <laughs> no, no, you've done this. He's done this. Go on, then. No, no. Go on then. Say it. I'm gonna kill us. I know it's gonna kill me. Yeah, Danny Collins. Danny Collins. Danny Collins. Danny Collins. Yeah. I would not have ever guessed that. I yeah, would you would have never. Guessed never yeah, you would have never guessed that. You would have never guessed that. So <laughs> you said he could play centre back. Yeah. Yes, he can. What, what? He can't. He can't play. He played. Obviously, I think for the, some of the clubs that he played for after Sunderland, and Ipswich, I think it was Nottingham Forest was one of them. Rotherham was the other, and he played centre back for those clubs that he went on to play after. Is that just so as his legs I, went? I, I think maybe he preferred there, but obviously when I played with him for those two, three years at Sunderland, that's where he played, and. I think his presence, he was a, obviously a tall boy, big, hard tackle, you know, no nonsense. I mean, he had a lot of mistakes in him also, but what he used to make up for is them crunching tackles, yeah. aerial headers, you know, things like that. You know, for a fact, you would get one or two, you know, mistakes in him again, but he used to get himself out of danger by the demanding stuff, yeah. tackles and, 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 you know, winning aerial headers and winning all those other stuff that he needs to be doing. Because if not, he would have, if, honestly, Roy Kuhn used to be on his back like a baby rash, like, <laughs> and I think that what made him into a good player. <laughs> oh, probably just, yeah, and you just touched on that now. What's that? How 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 was your relationship with Roy, Mr. Keane? Then I, I mean, I can't, I can't for the life of me think that he can fluster you. Not even you. Never. Would get, it would never. It, it would probably, you you it would know me. Annoy well. You know me well. It would probably yeah, annoy him even it, more. And it did. It did. Of course, you know, it, Roy is one of these individuals. He loves confrontation. That's what I got it from him. He likes. So I never used to justify myself. Like if he had a go at me, I would put my hand up. Obviously, he's had a one time against Nottingham Forest. He put me on and I messed up. Earnshaw nicked the ball for me and obviously scored. Obviously, we were losing 2-1 anyway, but I just made it worse by losing the game finished 3-1. And he, after the change room, he said, oh, when I put you on is to help the team, not cost the team. So I put my hand up to acknowledge him to say, hey, uh, I messed up. Like, but he thought I just went like that to say, just shrugged my shoulders like, yeah, whatever. Oh my God, <laughs> mate. He, he took off. Like he went, he said to me, he said to me, yeah, shrug your shoulders, shrug your shoulders. And I was like, in my mind thinking, Carlos, don't answer that because he's going to take it. And then he went, he went, in my afterlife, I want to come back as you or my dog. <laughs> cause you're too, <laughs> cause you're too laid back. And I was like, oh, Carlos, just don't say nothing. Like, just, you know, just, just take it on the chin and just l let him vent. Because I knew if, if, if I want to say, to say gaffer, like, I'm, I'm just acknowledging you to say, yeah, I messed up. Like, it might have led to something. Right. Different. So I just went, let me just take it. Take one. Just, you know, it hurts. Rub it off after I sit or something like that, you know, and just get on with it. But that's how he is because he, he used to always have this confrontation. Like he never used to, he had to let everything out. But then when he let everything out, not everyone is caught from the same clock. Not everyone is going to just take it and just don't say nothing. And the players that don't 
take it. When they when they fire back at him, it goes into something that you're thinking, no, 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 <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, you know, it, hey, we're gonna be here all night. Like, just leave it, you know. And it, and it did happen. It did happen, you know. Was I've that seen especially it, in the I've second season? Once, obviously, he got promoted because everything went well for the first year, and he he, he went up to the league like a rocket, didn't he? And then, yeah, but then, oh yeah, then everything went I think kids up after that because he brought yeah. in he brought in all these guys because the first year in the prem, obviously, when we got promoted, obviously we we, we survived. You know, we were we were always going to be that team to survive, which we did. So he obviously needed reinforcements. Obviously, Sunderland is. Is a very attractable club, but when it when it comes to attracting the players that you think and you really want to attract, it it might be good players, but for the wrong reason, and you might spend you might spend an unnecessary amount of millions to bring these players in because it's not going to work, and these players are just going to collect their money, and they might have a clause in their contract, so when they get relegated, they're off. And Roy did that. Roy brought in. The likes of El Hajj Juf, he brought in Steve Mark Brunk, he brought in Timu, and he brought in Dribel CC. Now, Dribel CC, he has a different hairstyle every 24 hours. <laughs> El Hajj Juf doesn't give two craps. Pascal Chimbonda, he's not here nor there. Steve Mark Brunk, who is the silent assassin, and you have the rest who thinking, yeah, I'm just here just to collect 40, 50 grand a week in my, in my bank account. And it had the whole changing room in turmoil. Like you had guys beefing with each other, like guys, you know, saying this about each other. Guys don't care. You know, they, they, you know, the, the, the discipline just went right out the door and Roy, couldn't handle the, those egos in the changing room. He could have handled it the year before because he knew what he had. Mm. But then he brought these other players in and he's thinking, ah, mm-mm. like you put in sugar in your, in your tea. That is never going to taste good, is it? Like, it's not, not, yeah. not even if you try, not even if you put sugar and then put salt, it's still not going to taste good. Yeah, you know, so, so so he obviously he had the chance to go back um, a few weeks ago, I think, yeah. um, and he rejected the opportunity to, um, which is quite an interesting conundrum. Also, going back to Sunderland, um, oh. do you think it would have worked? I think it would have worked because now he's had new owners and he he would have got the back in. <clears throat> would would the fans would have liked him? To come back, I think so, but it would have had a split reaction. Yeah. But I, for a fact, I knew he would have learned from his past how he might manage certain players. Now, if he does, if he didn't, then something is totally wrong with him. Now, if he doesn't want to change with the times, then he shouldn't be in management. So I think it would have been one of the best decisions for Sunderland to appoint him. From what I've read, obviously, is what obviously the 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 extent of the the contract that was offered to him, I think that was one of the reasons he was like, nah, because maybe he maybe would wanted a bit more time. Yeah. So I think it would have been a good decision for him to go back because he would have got them players and them really really knuckle down. You know, he would have had people around him. He would have brought in his staff and you know, and he as and he knows he knows the club. So yeah. it's not to say he's going into something strange. He knows the club already because he's been there for three years. And it would have been, I think it would have been a good um, relationship once more again. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. So we'll move, keep going on your best loan. Um, so, we'll go to centre back. All right. But this is a guy, again, who I played with him when he was really young. And he came on loan to the, to the club that I was at. And there was a certain, there was a manager, one of the best managers in the world, retired now, who put a price tag on his head of 20 million at the time when we wanted to sign him. Um, got promoted. Is he an international? Yes, he is. 
he is an international. Um, very, very, he's great with both feet. He's, you know, he's can head it. He can pass. You know, you know. He, I think he has. Is it, I think he, the reason. Man United. Yes, United? he was. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah. Um, you know, West I think Brom? the reason West Brom. Yeah. I think the reason that that price tag was on his head at that point in time, that manager knew he we were going on to to do great things. You know, yeah. And it's a shame he had to do it in a roundabout way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, just goes, <laughs> well, State United, stick it United, and with the great respect to defenders United have had for the past five, yeah. six, seven years, he, he's as good as them. Yeah, he would have yeah, come through yeah. by now, wouldn't he? He would have come through yeah. by now. Oh yeah. But he's making a great. I mean, he's doing yes, he's doing really true. well, and you can see when Leicester when Leicester don't have him, how much they're struggling. I'll take it. We're talk, we are talking about Johnny Evans. Yeah? Johnny Evans. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny <Yeah>. Evans. <laughs> Johnny Ar- Evans. Northern Irishman. <laughs> yes. <sighs> Where was he? So he came up to Sunderland, didn't he? Yeah, he came to Sunderland. Obviously, um, obviously with Roy connection, Roy brought in Johnny and. Um, Kieran? 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 No, not 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 Kieran. Oh. Um, he played for Leicester, the right back, um, Simpson. Oh, Danny Simpson. Simpson. Oh, yes, Danny yes. Simpson. So those two obviously came straight from United, straight to, and obviously they were on the promotion, the promoted team, at that time, um, um, and Roy really wanted to sign them on, but. At that point in time, he didn't have that that fun to sign Johnny, and unfortunately, Johnny Johnny stayed at United the following season. But we and and that showed we, we actually missed him big time, like really missed him. Yeah, no, definitely, you would do a play like that, and as yeah. you say, he went on to what he did um, and what he has done. It's and Leicester really, really miss him. It's like really told, missed him. So. Really missed him. Yes, hopefully he gets back to full fitness soon. Next to Johnny Evans is who, Carlos? But this is another guy. Um, he is an international. Played for one of the Caribbean teams. Um, played played with him at Sunderland also. Um, I think they signed Sunderland signed him from Gillingham. I think he played for Watford also. Uh, solid, solid guy at the back. Um, demands everything, doesn't take prisoners, you know, so. I'm trying to think. Did his um, brother play for Arsenal? No. Who was you thinking, Andrew? I was thinking Hoyt. I'm thinking, okay, this this is going to be a weird one. Can this player also play in midfield? He might have played in midfield, maybe? No? Uh, I don't think so. If if he did, it it wouldn't have been in my eyesight. (laughs) Okay. Um, He's a Jamaican international. Well, he was a Jamaican international. Oh. Why must cover this one? Played for QPR as well, did he? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he did. Who was the um, a Jamaican international? Yeah. Oh, he didn't play for some team he played for. He said Gillingham. He said Gillingham. I think. Gillingham I think. I think Sunderland. I think Sunderland signed him from Gillingham. I think when Dixon. he left, when he left, Dixon. No, Dixon. no, 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 no. You're close though. You're close though. <laughs> um, then, oh, yeah. <laughs> Donaldson. Donaldson. Not Donaldson. Donaldson no? not, uh, huh? Because obviously Dixon and him are really good friends. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, I'm out. This is the most we've been caught out. This is the and I've yeah. done three recently. <laughs> Dixon and him are really close friends. Wow. Yeah, they are good friends. 
they play obviously they play with each other at Sunderland also, you know. And go on, go on, you've done it again. You've done it. Go on. Nyron Nosworthy. Oh, yes. I would have had him down as a as a, as a fullback. Who mm-hmm. Nyron? Yeah. Nah, nah, Nyron. Nyron is a fullback. Yeah, he can run up and down the flank, but I don't think he can give you a final delivery. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Unless you want one of them guys who's just going to just say, "All right, yeah, there you go." <laughs> Maybe I've got to with somebody else. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Nyron, most other that you know. Nyron, nice Yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. So what we're going to do is we are going to pause it there. And yeah. then when we come back for the second part, we'll hear Marv's 60 seconds. And we will also hear the rest of Carlos's My Best 11. Hi. I'm Kelvin Davis. This is Sean Deutsch. This is Ricky Hill. My name is Kevin Nichols. My name is Mark Pembridge. Hi, my name's Rebecca Lowe. Kevin Gallen. Hi, my name is Mick Harford. My name's Steve Davis. This is Ian Foyer and Kevin Foley. My name's Graham Alexander. And you're listening to... And you're listening to My Best 11. My. My Best 11. My Best 11 podcast. Welcome back to the second part of Carlos Edwards' My Best Eleven. So far, Marlon Beresford, Kevin Foley, Danny Collins, Johnny Evans and Nara Nosworthy. I'm going to hand straight over to Marv for Marv's 60 seconds. Marvin. Okay. Um, Favourite other sport, Carlos? Basketball. VAR or no VAR? No VAR. Golden goal or penalty shootout? Which one? Penalty shootout. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Best ground you played at? Stadium. Best stadium. The Emirates. Funniest player you ever come across? (laughs) Kevin Nichols. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Bundes, Bundesliga, La Liga, or Syria for quality? Which one? Bundesliga, mm-hmm. Bundesliga. 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 Okay. Um, if you wasn't a footballer, what would you have done? Accounting. Okay. Last one, Marvin. Uh, last one. Beer, wine. Or spirits? Which one? Beer. Yeah. Oh, beer. I thought you might go for spirit, man. Look how sick. Yeah. You look so lean and you look lean and slim still. No <laughs> way is he a beer drinker. Yeah, but you know. Anything that I just say, what they always ask, what what's your um, what's your favorite bear? I always say an open one. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Are you ever you said penalties? Have you ever been in a penalty shootout? Yes, in college though. Oh wow! So you've never I- been in one as a professional? No, don't ask me why. Don't ask me what, what happened. Jeez. Don't ask me what happened. Yeah, I've never Why? been in a, a. I've never. I missed. We lost. <laughs> we lost the championship, mate. Honestly, College. on yeah. penalty shootout. Oh, was it one of these um, knockout things after the league? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just like, oh no. But I've never, well, like, professionally, I never had a penalty shootout. Yeah. Did you take many penalties? I did. I used to go route one, mate, down the middle. If I'm not sure, I used to go route one, head down, down the middle. I have a favourite corner. I'll always go to the right of the, the goalkeeper. But if if I got Twitchy Bomb, I go down the middle. <laughs> That's really I can't believe you know it's pretty strange how some players have never been in a penalty shootout, especially with um, especially with Trinidad back back in oh six and around then when you were when you had a fantastic team. I wasn't sure if you had to do one of those as part of the qualifiers or No, we didn't, we did it, we did it. No, we didn't. Obviously, we played Bahrain in the in the playoff. Obviously, drew in Trinidad one one and beat them at their place one nil. So we didn't have the the chance of having penalties or anything like that. Yeah. So what? So what age did you um, get your full cap? Or did you go through? Was there like under 17s, under eighteen? Or no, no. Obviously, when when 
I, I was with the under 21s. Obviously, we, we, we played a, 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 a few, um, like Pan Am games and stuff. But my full debut for Trinidad was obviously in 1999. And, um, I oh, think you then? I was 19. 19. Yeah. 19. Nice. How did you play? Uh, it was against, Guadeloupe. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Guadeloupe in the Caribbean Cup. Caribbean Cup. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. And, um, I'm going to ask the, an obvious question here, or maybe obvious. Was you qualifying and representing Trinidad in the 06 World Cup? Was that your greatest personal achievement in? Oh, football? without, without a, without a shadow of a doubt, Andrew. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people say, what, what, what would you prefer? Like playing in the Prem in a World Cup, you're thinking, well, it's the biggest stage in world football. So that would always be up there. You know, um, I think when we first qualified for the 2006 World Cup, it, it was, it was still shell shock, like two years, three years down the line after the World Cup, you're thinking, did I just play in the World Cup? You know, it, it, it didn't actually register proper that I have to say, like when if people mention it now, they're thinking, "Oh yeah, you know what? I already played at the World Cup." Like you know, it's because it's it was so unbelievable. Like you, you, sometimes you just shell shot that you just don't want to believe that it happened, but it did actually happen. Yeah, and and you got um obviously it was over in Germany. You were in um Europe at the time. What was the feedback you were getting like? Um, what was the feedback you were getting from from Trinidad itself? It it was you know what. It was so good. Like I had so much support, even though I think, I think I, I left Luton and uh, yeah, I was just, I just, I was not leaving Luton to be fair to go. To, but the support that I had from the Luton fans, it was unbelievable. Like without a shadow of a doubt, like I had people with half scarf, half Luton, half Trinidad flags and stuff like, you know, and it, Obviously, the same thing in Trinidad. Trinidad, I think, for those three weeks, I always say to people, for those three weeks for that World Cup, it didn't have one crime. Even the bandits and the criminals stopped killing people, each other. <laughs> 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 they, they said, hey, you know what? Time out, lads. World Cup is on. Trinidad is in the World Cup. Let's have a bit of truce, you know? No killing, no robbing, no one. Let's, you know, after the three weeks, we'll go back to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and have but you still was, got have you still got the shirts? I do, I still do. I actually still do. Are your Trinidad yeah. ones or did you swap? I swapped and I obviously I kept one of my Trinidad ones and I swapped obviously I had I have Ashley Coles and I have Freddie Youngbirds and uh I can't remember the other guy. It's somewhere about that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't remember the guy from Paraguay, but yeah, I got Ashley Cold and Freddie Youngberg from Sweden. Awesome. I forgot yeah. about Freddie Youngberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great yeah. player. That would be awesome. That was absolutely and um, family proud as well. Was it one of those moments where? Oh yeah, even though they're, it, even though they're it, proud it, it anyway, was, I'm sure, but another level. It was always another level because, you know, it's, you know, they're so proud of you. It's, 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 it's things that some of the best players in the world don't get the opportunity yeah. to, to play in, you know. So for me and for a small nation like Trinidad to ever qualify for that, for the World Cup, it, it is something really special. And it's just not just for me personally, it's obviously for my kids because they can, when they get older, they can say, oh, their dad played in the World Cup, you know, they will see them all the, stuff that was brought back from Germany and, you know, just made the whole entire population proud. And obviously the fans, obviously the people that actually, that you, you, you give something back to the Luton fans, the Sunderland fans who know you, they could still say, oh, he was part of a Luton team and actually played at the World Cup. So, you know, you got all that history that you, you, people will look back at, you know, because there was a lot of people, obviously, even though they're English, they still supported us when we played against Sweden and Paraguay. Obviously, they were not supporters when we played against England. So 
but you still had that extra support on the other side of the world when it comes to the football side because you're one of them because you mm. played for their club and they're passionate about it. So they want to see you do good. So all of those things you've got to try and put into consideration, you know. Fantastic. That would be, be amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So we're going to move back to your best loan. Um, and we're going to start off with, you said number four. You plan number four, can't hold up. Yeah. Um, this player, they, they, they label him the next, they had labeled him the next Roy Key. Great player, great feet, uh, smallish guy, um, an international also, um, played for a few clubs, obviously played, um, played for Hibs, played for Celtic, played for Leeds. Played for Man United, played for Sunderland, and to be fair, he didn't disappoint. Uh, I think the only thing that was lacking in him being the next Roy Keane was his crunching tackles. Other than that, what a player! Absolutely, vision from Vision Express. Did, did he play for Man United as well? You say? Yes, he did. The only one I can. Think of, I know Andrew's already got it. I think I have. Liam Miller? That's who I think. Liam, Liam yeah. Miller. <laughs> Good job, Mark. Yeah, no, not with us anymore. Uh, rest in peace, yeah. you know. But honestly, <laughs> a player that I would have loved to play with week in, week out. And you think, Marv, that I'm laid back. <laughs> what, was he? Was he? <laughs> You 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 didn't met you didn't met that Irish guy, mate. He is worse than me. Honestly. Seriously, he, mate. Honestly, I think it, I think we were neck and neck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, he was a what a player he was. What a player. Fantastic. Um, what a player. What a guy as well. You said. What a guy. Honestly, yeah, like you know, obviously, my missus still obviously communicate. With his obviously widow and stuff, and you know, it was just sad when we heard the news and the things like that. But you you get to learn a lot of. I think it's something about the Irish that you know, you know. I'm not racist, but for some reason, for some reason, the Irish people love the black people for some reason. You know, I, 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 maybe it's just me, but I got a lot of Irish friends that is just you know, they just crazy people but Liam was just a a guy when it comes to family and football it's like you, you can't separate the two really because he used to make them a part of his journey and it, it, it was just special being on the pitch with him even though right. Roy, he used to I think he used to give Roy Keane a few extra grades every day but you knew exactly what you're going to get from him when yeah. he crosses that white line. Yeah. And he'd have played under Roy at Celtic as well, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so to take somebody with you means that it must have been something there. Yep. Yep. 100%. So, awesome. So, Liam Miller, um, who next to Liam do we have? Uh, I'll start on the left. There's this guy. Um He's managing now. Well, play with him at one of my, obviously my first club. Great left foot. Um, a big moaner. Um, you know, played at Man play United. For... Oh, Man United. Yeah. Played at Man yeah. United. Yeah. I was going to throw them there right out there. I was going to say, Maybe maybe this other one's gonna be on the other side. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say this one because it's one of them. Um, yeah, he's a he's oh, manager now. Oh yeah okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great player, honestly. But did his did it did it did his did his was his dad a manager? Yes, his dad was the manager. Hey, 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 he's just been sacked. Has he? Is he? Has he? I thought I read 24 hours ago he's just left Peterborough, if it's who I think you're talking about. <laughs> who do you, you think I'm talking about? 
Um, Ferguson. Darren Ferguson. Yeah. Darren Ferguson. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. If it's the same <laughs> yeah, Darren he's, Ferguson. He's, he's left. Yeah, he, 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 he resigned. Left. He resigned. Yeah. He resigned. Yeah. 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 And so he left. Darren Ferguson. That's the reason why I, he didn't get it, by the way. And I, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. And I think, <laughs> and I think he was underrated. I think what, Carlos, he was a good, he was a good player, wasn't he? I think he was, I yeah. think because of who his dad was, there was a exactly. lot of, like, you know, of, um, yeah. of things to take on his shoulders. But he I think there was a lot player. of belief that you only got to where you got to because of your dad. And that was very unfair. But you know what? He good. stayed at Wrexham for the whole... What, what, even when when I joined, I think one of his biggest disappointments, he, he he wanted the, the Wrexham job and that didn't materialise. So that kind of... Kind of you know, but he's kind of made Peter for his own. I know he's just lit, but he's one of these people that goes to Peterborough, comes, leaves, goes back to Peterborough, leaves. And he kind of does this thing with Peterborough now, doesn't he? It feels like. He does, he does. Um, but... That, I think that was his like third spell or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like Peter um, and then they they've just appointed McCann, who's managed the club already. He's just got sacked from Hull two weeks ago, so he they just appointed him today or yesterday on a two year contract, two and a half right. year contract. Uh, so it's yeah. like, oh, it's like you know, they ran around in circles in that league. The managers they, they are for some reason, but. I think Peterborough is like second bottom and, and Hull is like fourth bottom, you know. And they, and what a coincidence, they play each other over the weekend. Peterborough play Hull. So McCann oh, is just taking on his old club, you know. Love it. <sighs> Love it. So Darren Ferguson so, in central midfield. Um, those people who didn't see him, was he a, what would you say he's like? A bit of a playmaker, a baller? He is a baller. He is yeah. great left foot. Great left foot, honestly, and that's one of the reasons why I used to love to play with him because obviously I'm I'm playing on the opposite side of him, so I knew when he had that ball, I was just gonna go, all right, it's on, I'm ready, and I used to just say, Daz, when you get it, I'm on my bike, yeah. let's go, and. It just used to be something so remarkable between me and him that, 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 you know, set up that it was very successful with us. The time that we had, it was so successful that I never even venture into, you know, didn't want to say, I don't want to play with him, but he used to moan as hell because he, he wanted to win that much. And he was passionate about it. That honestly, it used to get you. It used you would get a bloody migraine just listening to him because he used to just. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, he, he had a very good spell at um, Wolves. I remember playing against him when he's at Wolves. He had a real yeah, good, yeah, he controlled the midfield and was like real, like he said, a busy little player. His left foot, clever little balls yeah. around the corner, that, around the corner. That's the only. That's I think that's the only leg that he was born with because <laughs> that right foot, honestly, it was non-existent. They had to stand on. Yeah, <laughs> just there. <laughs> not, even, not even to stand on, it's just there. <laughs> Fantastic. So next to Darren um, and Liam, who have we got in the midfield? In that number 10 role, I'll go in the number 10 role, is a player that, whew, how to say, how to describe this player is... Well, yeah, I'm just going to throw it in there. Uh, was he at Leeds? He was at Leeds. Was he at Birmingham? Was he at Birmingham? He was at Birmingham. Was he at Charlton? He was at Charlton. You can't get me. I told you. <laughs> Lee uh, Boyer. Lee Boyer. Lee Boyer. Uh. <laughs> um, Lee, how to describe him? Um, Great, great person, um, great player, a leader. Yeah, right. obviously, Lee, Lee Boyer, a, honestly, a great leader, great player. Um, and it, it, it was just so sad that it happened that I actually played with him in the back end of, of, of my career. Um, but you could have seen the kind of the heart that he had. He was 
obviously brutal in, in terms of the way that he used to play the game, you know, with, with passion. He used to play with, you know, with everything, with just be off the cuff. And I think maybe if I'd play with a player like that in early in my career, coming, you know, to the middle of my career, it would have been so much sweeter because you would have learned a lot of things because he's, he's played at the highest level. He's played at some clubs and you can see he always played with his heart on his sleeve. So things like that, you, you, you do like to see in players because, you know, you, you, you want players who, when you look around that as an individual, that you can say, oh, yeah, I'm ready to... He's, you, you can go into the trenches with a player like that because you know what you're going to get. And Lee was one of those players that you're going to say, yes, I am ready for battle. So, and he never used to disappoint you when it comes to that. Never. Yeah, oh, definitely. Wore his heart on his sleeve, that man. Obviously, he did. He did. Without a doubt. Um, so, we'll move on to your forwards. Um, oh, forwards. How are you going to lay these out? Um, my forwards. Obviously, this is a player. His presence alone will intimidate a lot of people. Where are we going? In the middle or on the side? Middle or we're left or right? Which one we're going first? Um, no, I'm, I'm in the middle, in the middle. I'm going to leave the right for last. <laughs> in the oh, middle. In the middle. Yeah. yeah. His, presence, his presence alone will intimidate a lot of people. And is, he, I, is he currently manager of the women's Trinidad and Tobago team? Uh, no. No. Oh, so Kenwin's not he... there. I just thought when you said presence, Kenwin's a big boy. I just assumed you meant Kenwin. Was it? Was he an international? No. Ooh. Ooh. Did he play for Derby? Yes. And Leicester? Yes. All right, Kenwin. He got a B cap, didn't he? If, if you want yeah, to, cool. you want to, I know, <laughs> Mister Ninety Two, Mister Ninety Two International, perhaps. All if, right, if, all right. If, if, if you want to calm that, if you we'll give them that, we'll give them that one. Mark. He listens to these. He listens he to does. these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, it's Dee we'll Give him that one. Dee Howard, uh, fat head, big presence. I used to love it because I knew. Nine out of ten times, he's going to win those headers, and I just need to be. And I, he used to, he used to kill me sometimes if I don't get into someone who's flick on, because you know why? He wants to be get into the box for me to cross it so he can head it. Yeah. So if I don't get onto it, he's going to be moaning like hell. You know what? Yeah, but man? yeah, but you, you should have said to him, well, if he's flicking him on and you're running ahead of him at the speed you're in, that exactly. he's not as quick exactly. as you. He's not going to get in there. You got to slow yourself down. <laughs> he, 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 He's he's pulling a caravan behind him. That's a problem because he can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you always oh, like geez. to play with those type of players? Those those big men up front. Was that yeah. what worked for you? Yeah. I mean, you, you got to play with to your strength. I, I'm not the biggest. I'm not the strongest. So my my game is to base on taking on people, knocking it past, getting deliveries in. And if I don't get deliveries in, you've got guys like Big Stevie Howard and Kenman Jones who's going to want to rip my head off. So I used to relish the, the chances because I used to tell them to flick. I'm on, obviously. And they, as Mark said, they need to just take the parachute off their back after they flicked it and get into the bus. Because if, I, if I'm crossing it and you're not there, then I'm going to be bollocking you because I'm just sprinting 60, 70 yards to get the ball to, to cross it into you. So. It was so good, and most of the time, even though he doesn't flick it on, because a lot of defenders will try to read your run, so they will drop off, and he may not get it. So most of the time, if TV can't flick it, he will head it down into my path. And it's easy for him now to start itching himself into the box, because I can either have an extra touch, two or three more, and take the defender on and then cross it. So things like that. You, and we had a good relationship. I mean, it just sad that... You know the, the 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 playing time with me and him kind of cut short because he went that way, I went the other way, and we didn't get that opportunity to, you know, really 
you know, give each other that full potential that, you know, where we knew that we could have had a good combination. So that was, you know, that a lot of the times that the players that I've chosen now, I never get the opportunity to have a long stint with them. But the time that I did have, you could tell that, you know, it's it, the connection was straight away, yeah. straight there. Fantastic. So Big Stevie in the middle, who is either side? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, <laughs> I would start on the left. All right. How much clip have we got? What two more players? Is it two players? Yes. Yeah. Two players. Two players left. Um, Saving the hard ones or last. I know. I always do. I always, always, always do. Um. To be fair, this player. Um. Very stocky player, really short, great. Obviously, he can good at free kicks. Um, he's Scottish. Play with him. It's, play with him at Sunderland. Um, he had spells at Sheffield Wednesday. Um. Uh, I can't remember. Very small guy. Um, obviously Scottish. very reckless. With got it. You should be Scottish and not Irish. He is Scottish. Yeah, he's right. Scottish. I don't. I don't know who he's thinking of. What nationality was Chopra? Chopra, well, Chopra was English, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Chopra is like that. Yeah, English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah English. Um. And then you had the last. Oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about. I think. <laughs> Where else did he play for? Did you say? I think he played at Sheffield. Obviously, Sunderland and um, Sheffield right. Wednesday. I don't remember at Sheffield Wednesday. I don't. Yeah, was it? Um, is it? Um, I'm just gonna say it because I'm gonna say it. Ross Wallace. Ross Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you you pulled that out tonight. of your, your bag. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You're on the board tonight. He's Scottish, yes. The Scottish. Yeah. Because oh. it's, okay, I see. Yeah. I thought he was playing a pun. I thought it was Jason Scotland for that. No, I no. Ross, to be fair, Ross is one of these players. He, he, he got so much about him, but his attitude is what kind of let him down from going to the next level. Like, he just, I think he, I think he hung around with Liam Miller a bit too much. That he was too laid back, and not everyone can be laid back. Yeah. You know, it's only right. one Carlos Edwards. There's only one Carlos Edwards, Marv. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, but well, Russ, honestly, he he's a player that could change a game if he's got his mind set and ready. You know, and you know, I I, I did enjoy my time with him. You know, obviously, hit him on the left, I'm on the right. You know, we used to compliment each other a lot because it was tit for tat, really. You know, all right, let's see who can assist what. And, you know, so we used to have a good, you know, good understanding, good combination, regardless if we were playing on opposite sides of each other. So that was a bonus. And um, you must now, I mean, how do you, and I'm, this is a question to Marv as well. You said about um, Ross Wallace, he's one of those players that could have kicked on if he wouldn't have been so laid back or... So he's probably one of those people who you just want to throttle because he's frustrates yeah, you. you. you Andrew, you hit the nail on the head, mate, honestly. So how do you two manage that? Obviously, you're starting to get to management, Carlos, fully, and I know Mark does a lot of coaching. How do you... What what do you do in that situation? I think you you, you, you learn from those experiences, do you? You learn from... You, you look back at yourself, and I always try to say it's not about me now because, you know... Even my son sometimes said, oh, dad, obviously, you know, this. And I always say to him, don't be like your dad. Don't be like me. You are you. Be like you. Don't. I said, always try to say to the, the obviously, the girl, the ladies and the, 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 the younger boys and stuff like that. Like, try to be you. I said, if, uh, in, in a other world, obviously, you try to take a, a few things that I have succeeded from. And try to implement it into you being your own individual. Because if you try to be like me, you're going to try, try, and it's like, you know, you try to complicate things a bit too much. But 
the only person who's in charge of you is, is the individual. So you've got to make sure that whatever you do, you try to be something totally different, but at the same time, take a bit of what Rooney's done, take a bit of what Messi's done, take a bit of what Ronaldo's done and try to, you know, make something of yourself. So, yeah. yes, I was laid back, but that don't say I wasn't clued on to the things that I wanted to succeed in. Yes, obviously, my wife still tell me up to this day, she said, you too laid back, you know, uh, you know and things like that. And I, I laugh at it, which... Ten, nine, nine and a half of the ten times she's right, you know, but but that doesn't derail me from being really hard and wanting something like I know what I want. I go for it because I, I put everything into it. So I try to get them to start thinking like that, you know, yeah. and not just because a, a day lost, as I say, is a day that you can't get back. So regardless of what, if it's five minutes in the day, you've got to do do it for 100%. Just do it because that five minutes, you can't get that five minutes back regardless if you try. Unless you're a bloody magician and you can turn the time around and you can do it. I don't think there's anyone who can do that right now in this lifetime. Yeah. What about you, Marv? What do you do? You'd like to give them a kick up the arse or what, what do you no, find? No, I mean, as, as similar to what Carlos just said there, I think, I mean, if... Someone like that, like Ross Wallace. I mean, I'd probably look at it and say, "Well, yeah, he's laid back, and he could be, he could go to that next level." But instead of like going there, I'd probably say, "Well, what is he good at? What is he good at? Play to your strengths, and just keep reinforcing to him to say, look, this is what you're good at. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it.' And then, because yeah. like you get frustrated sometimes if you're trying to like think, "Oh, I know we could get some more out of him," but there's something in him which you like already, so. Why not just keep, keep like, doing it. up that? Yeah, yeah. And just keep do keep doing that, and then you know you'll, you'll get you'll get what you get out of him um, in the games, Eventually. which hopefully is going to be a producing match winning balls and match winning goals. You know. Yep. Yeah. So, Very interesting. Totally interesting from your guys' perspective, obviously being in the making it to the top of the game. So we'll pass over now back to Carlos for the final player who he reckons he's got a doozy, even though Marv is nailing it. Yeah, the, my my might get this one a bit. He might get it, or he may not get it. Young I'll lad, be surprised. young lad. Yeah, 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 he young. Well, was a young lad when he first came to Sunderland. Um, absolute nutter, international player again. Um, he came to to Sunderland highly recommended from um Arsenal Academy. Yeah. All right, ah. came came at a price of two point five million. Was he French? Um, no, he's Irish. Oh, um, um, played for Celtic. Played for Hibs. I need, to, I need to get. I need to get another name out of my head. It's not him. Oh, I, I had that Jermaine Aladier guy in my head. No, um, he's Irish. Yeah, no, that's what I need to get in my head. Um, he come from, uh, from Arsenal. He said came from Arsenal. Came to the Arsenal Academy. Um, came really highly recommended. Absolute Looney Tune also. Um. Who's this then? Who's this? <laughs> and he said, was that Celtic as well? Yeah, he played at Celtic, he played at Hibs. Where's he now? Whew, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> is he still um, playing or, you know, or is he on the edge I, of retirement? Would he be on the edge know. of retirement? I, th I think he is, but I think he's... Last couple of years, he was he was at Hibs the last couple of years. Um... And then, he, um, I can't remember where he where he is now because he's he's one of those guys. Honestly, great player ability, but he's just not. I think he got a few screws loose. You know, Irish, <laughs> Irish, Arsenal, Celtic. I 
No. This is going to really annoy me. I know. This is going to annoy me. Give us initials. Give us his initials. A S. A for Alpha. S for Snake. That still doesn't help. A. Hey. Oh, no, no, go on, guys. You've done this. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go on, go on, Andrew. No, it's going to take you forever to get it, but I would get it. No, it's, it's Irish. Um, oh! Marvin looked like he's got a little... <laughs> What's his first name? What's his first name? Ash. Anthony. Anthony Stokes. Ah, Anthony Stokes, go. that's it. Yes, yes. yes. Anthony, there you go, Stokes. well done. Well done. <laughs> Anthony Stokes. Yeah, he had a blinder up at, up in up north in Scotland, didn't he? He's done. Yeah. The Celtic loved him. I don't know about. I didn't follow him as much at Sunderland, but Celtic loved but that, him. That, and 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 that's one of the reasons you're thinking when he was at some when he was at, at Celtic, you're thinking he was still about 27, 28. All right, yeah. and you're thinking, mate, that is your prime. Like he was flying. Yeah. Like, You've got another big seven. move. He's got a big move in him still. And yeah. this is what I just said about a couple of minutes ago. We've got a few screws that is loose. Like, <laughs> he's got all the ability, but he just, he doesn't see the bigger picture. Yeah. Right. You know, and that has just caused him to just kind of derail, get, get on back on track, derail again. But what a player. Like, but I think there is, when he was with Roy, he knew he couldn't uh, slack off. All of those rails because he knew that straight away. Like, there's only one chance you get with Roy, and it's either that chance or. So, I had the best time with him playing at that time, and then he moved on, and then he kickstarted his career again when he went to Celtic, and you're thinking, wow, you know, this is the Anthony Stoke that I know that I played with, you know, and it just so happened that you know, you know, Andrew just asked a question, where is he playing now, and I. I can't even answer that question because he's just gone off, gone off the rails. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a shame. He's a fantastic player. Fantastic player. Great player. Absolutely great player. You, yeah. you, you, honestly, you know for fact when he's on his game, he will tear you a new hole. Like he was that confident with himself, and you know you could see that aura about him. You know, just like he's confident. Taking on anyone that is standing in his way. Interesting, Marvin. Over to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I know we've, we've we've gone forward and we're nearly come to the end there, but the loot and move. How did that come about, Mark? I, I, I remember you could obviously. It's I, I tell this story so much times, right? The loot and move is that I was at Wrexham. Mike was trying to sign me maybe a year before, obviously. Wrexham didn't want to let me go and then Wrexham was going through a bit of a turmoil with the new ownership and the, the new chairman board over the club and things were just going absolutely, you know, rock bottom from there. But it came at a time that, you know what, it's time for me to move. I've been there five years, so it's a bit of a change we needed. And then Mike, my agent, obviously he know, he know, knew him really well and he was like obviously Carlos is not free do you want him and Mike was like well yeah obviously never met knew her before um and obviously when I came to Luton I was like when I watched um Pinky and the Brain that's Mike Newell and Steen you're thinking oh my god like the blind leading the blind here <laughs> you're thinking oh my god like what is going on here? But you know what? As soon as I came in, I was like, I'm moving to a new club. It's going to have some big egos. And straight away, you know, I fitted in really well, but with consequences. Because <laughs> you had you had Marlon, you had Kev, you had crazy Australian coin, um, and big Stevie, who is like, the, he he is like the, the guy who is just gonna be, yeah. He's just gonna hit the hammer like yeah, he's guilty. And he got all of them, <laughs> all those boys, all those boys that I have to go through to be certified like yeah. But the move was a move that kind of propelled me to be go to the next level because those boys 
in that changing room was a dime a dozen, mate. Like, you, you can't, you, I don't think you can get another group of guys like that in one changing room who are full of crap, but at the same time, literally just hardcore and will do anything to win for each other, you know? So the move was obviously a smooth transition from Wrexham to, to Luton, knowing that I'm coming to a manager who wanted to sign me from a year before. So it was a really, really easy decision. Mm. Awesome. Right. Fantastic. Okay, so... um Final question. Well, we're not final question yet. Before we are, who, which manager is going to leave this eleven? Who? Which, it doesn't have to be a manager. It could be someone, um, an inspirational person, like you said earlier on, I'm growing up as a coach. It could be um, a, a mentor. It could be whoever you want. Which who's going to leave this say, eleven? I would say the manager that I would put there would be Mick McCarthy. Okay. Yeah. Reason, reason for that is that Mick is old school, but mm. at the same time, he, he's a very good man manager when it comes to players, when it comes to knowing how to get the best out of players, knowing when players need to rest, knowing what to say to the players to assure them that, listen, you will get your time. You know, so he was really good when it comes to all those attributes. You know, he caught, his door is always open. He will always say to you, my door is always open. You can come and speak to me, regardless if it's a football-related situation, if you've got trouble outside of football. So he was just open arms to making sure that his players was ready at all times when called upon. So yeah. he didn't want to make it look like, yeah, I'm just a manager when it comes to football. He was there right. for you, and we would always make sure that that yeah, you put your family first, make sure things are right at home, and you know. And I think with that group, that eleven that I picked, regardless if it had guys who you, we all know we got crazy guys at that eleven, I think you would have known exactly how to manage those players and how to get the best out of them. Fantastic, Mick McCarthy. And finally, yes. Yeah, so just for those um, clubs and those um, people. What are you doing now? What, what have you been up to since you've stopped playing? Well, you're still a fish. I think you're still playing, aren't you, really? Aren't you still? No? I don't know, ma'am. Listen, let's just say I've stopped. Let's just say I've stopped okay. because it's, it's, I think it's prolonging too, too much now in terms of, obviously, for me, I think I'm taking advantage of my, my legs. Um, yes, I'm still involved with Berry Town, obviously. Ben Chinry and Big Alan Lee is, there, ben, ben Chinry is the, the manager of the club. Big Alan Lee is obviously one of the, the directors kind of set up. He is there with, with Ben and he, obviously Ben has a great staff. Obviously he's got a great bunch of boys there who, who can go on to play obviously at the, at, at, at the next high levels. But, you know, um, my whole situation being there, it's obviously I'm still playing a bit. Obviously trying to mentor a few of the, the younger players. You know, just trying to give them a bit of my experience so that they can go on and give them a few tips and, and things like that. And recently, obviously, um, Kenman Jones is the, the new head coach of the Trinidad Tobago senior women's team. And uh, obviously, the Trinidad Tobago Federation just appointed me one of his assistants. Um, obviously, I was back home last week. For two of the games against one against um, Nicaragua and one against Dominica, which we won two one and two nil, and that obviously is the preliminary rounds to go into the next phase um, um, in June to obviously hopefully progress to the Women's World Cup in Australia in 2023. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Obviously, I'm. You know, it's a step in the right direction. It's things that I want to do, um, regardless if it's the women's side of the football. Obviously, we all want the same thing is to succeed and to, you know, make better of what we have. So it was a privilege. It is a privilege to be, you know, selected as one of Kenyon's assistants. I'm really looking forward to the 
the challenge going forward. Fantastic. Right. Fantastic. Well, I want to say on behalf of myself, Marv, and the listeners, thank you so much for giving up um, so much of your time, Carlos. Um, it was fantastic to hear from you. And as I said at the start, I've got some fantastic memories of you playing down at the Kenilworth. Um, and it was great to relive some of them and hear some other stories as well. So um, thank you so much for your time, Carlos. Hey, yes, good morning, buddy, Carlos. Marv, Marv and Andrew, next yeah. time, don't, make it, don't, don't take so long next time, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen like that. <laughs> awesome. Well, a lovely to hear from you. And that was, and that I think tees off Carlos's personality. And that was Carlos Edwards' My Best Eleven. <laughs>